tell Cypher it's already started. Tell Cypher it's already started. when I say this, I'm going to remember and I won't let you ask a question, <laughs> is when I do Q&A at any panel I moderate, I ask you to have a question, not a comment, not a backstory, not context, especially since we only have 45 minutes instead of an hour like we normally do. So if you do have a question, please write it down while you're sitting there, think about it. If we don't get to you, we will hang out in the hallway for a little bit afterwards. We can be respectful of time and clear the room after we're done for the next panel. Um, and also, please stay on topic, please stay relevant. If you don't have a relevant question, again, you can ask us, but not in this room. I will tell you to sit down. <laughs> Y'all laugh. It's can not confirm. funny. It she will. Funny. Um, but before I start gabbing a lot, I'm going to introduce, well, people are going to introduce themselves. They're all grown. <laughs> yes. Um, so I'm going to just start in the order on the slide. Jules, who are you? Hi, um, I'm Cyra Jules. Um, I am a tech-based variety streamer here on this purple app. Um, I've been streaming for like two years, and I've seen some pretty weird stuff, so I'm happy to share some of that experience with you. <laughs> well, yeah, I want to know what weird stuff you're talking about, though. I've got to talk to you about that. People are just weird. Oh, 
Oh, that's what you mean. I thought you meant weird in a good way. All right, how y'all doing? Um, I'm Kate Out the God. I am one of your new Twitch Black Guild leaders alongside Thor. Yeah. Um, I've been streaming for about six years. Uh, I mainly stream like anime games. As y'all can see, I can probably see like Naruto on my knees. Um, I play a lot of RPGs, or I play a lot of whatever games the company wanna you know wanna send me. Play them, have fun, show my chat. Like, hey, you should buy it or you don't. Um, but I also work with um, Corsair, Elgato, VMD, and I'm signing Luminosity as well, and I'm a Twitch partner, so got to say all that. All right. And hi there. Uh, like KDOT said previously, I'm one of the new Twitch Black Guild leads. Uh, and my name is Thor Mungander, but you can call me Thor. Uh, I like to create a lot of content around alternative variety uh, controls, such as steering wheels, DK bongos, DDR pads, and things like Elden Ring, Hollow Knight, Dark Souls, and many other weird, chaotic things that you shouldn't do, including potatoes. But on top of that, I'm a Twitch partner, and I also like to do a lot of work around LGBTQIA+, neurodiversity, and mental health awareness, and uplift marginalized creators on the platform. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Lady Luck 34 uh, and I'm theoretically a variety streamer. Theoretical being I hyper focus on one thing at a time. Uh, so my past three months have been Diablo 4, but I also do a lot of sewing and crochet, so crafty content. Uh, and yeah, sure, that continuing on. Okay. Uh, and I'm your moderator, uh, Seth Rotier. November marks 10 years streaming on the platform for me. I just remembered my first ever stream that I did was for the Destiny beta in 2014, so it's actually been a decade. Oh my god. Hey, uh, decade. And then November also marks my seven year partner anniversary, so I've stuck it out for some reason. Despite the weirdness on the platform that we're going to talk about a lot. Um, yeah, it's a whole lot, so. Um, so we're going to define this for you. A uh, quick show of hands. Who in the room? And you know, if you're in chat, just say, "What are? Do you know what a parasocial relationship is?" Raise your hands. I, look, I'm short and I'm on this tall ass table. So, <laughs> all right, a good smattering of people. I'm not going to read this at you. I hate when people do that at presentations. But just the TLDR is that parasocial relationships are. You know, they're by by their nature they're not inherently bad. I think a lot of people just hear parasocial and go, "That's bad." It's unto itself. It's not bad. It's it's what you do with the parasocial yeah. relationship. Yeah. Um, you know, it's basically like you know, I'm a fan of and friend of the people on this panel, but there's still boundaries. I still act a certain way no matter how well I know someone, mm -hmm. and I don't expect that my five, ten, twenty five a month gets me access to the golden vault and be your BFF. But a lot of people do, and we're gonna talk about that. Um, this is just something that is more aimed at streaming and being a content creator. Again, feel free to take out your phone, take, take a picture, I'm not reading it at you or to you, because I hate when people do that. Um, so, give you a minute to read that. And uh, shout out to our friend, our Bohemian and now Crown, uh, for letting us use these photos from the many years I've done this panel in a row. Uh, so, would any of you like to talk about these? Oh, I can't see. There's, it, it got cut off. I'm short. Um, so, well, no, we had three. There's three arrows for a reason. The formatting got messed up a little bit. Um, but we, we're talking about creator to audience, which is what a lot of people don't actually talk about. Creator to creator, which is that kind of parasocial follow for follow that people like to do. And then the part that is cut off is audience to creator, the one that everyone seems to know about. So uh, do any of you want to talk about creator to audience? Because we don't mention that very often. All right, don't yes. all talk at once. <laughs> I think, oh. We talk about it a lot because obviously there's a variety of tools that are built in to Twitch and that are done or made possible via bots, which is, and it's the ways in which you can support a streamer doing, you know, gift, gift subs, something yourself, donations, tips, um, leveraging bits, and all those things. 
And most of the time, as mentioned, we're thinking about it from the perspective of like the audience to the creator. But the flip side is when a creator is leveraging that they know their audience will help them with things. Um, and I think sometimes there's a like, hey, we're working towards a goal of some new equipment. I want to make the stream better. But then there's just like, hey, there's this really cool like $500 thing that I want. By the way, here's my wish list repeatedly, repeatedly, where suddenly you're like putting a expectation and pressure onto your audience to do something for you. Um, in this case, using a, obviously a uh, material item is something, but it can be like, oh, you know, I want, I, I want to hit X level, so you all should sub to me more, or send your friends here, give gift subs, things like that. It's usually not, not blatant to the sense of they're just going to tell you to do it, but the way that they act, what they say, how they say it, creates this implication of do this thing for me, audience, because you love me, or you've been here for years, or whatever other kind of uh, pressure they can put on you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes as well, uh, the other way that can also be seen and used is people trying to uh, leverage their audience to get more support on something, uh, especially on social media. And they can use this in a manipulative way to try and override other people in the space. This is something that you'll see a lot with uh, toxic creators or um, people who, who know they're in the wrong on something and want to garner support on their side. And this is just another example of that. That's something which I say, don't, don't ever get involved with because it's just, it's a bad one. <laughs> just don't do it. Jules or Kid, you got any thoughts on that before we talk about creator to creator? I was like they pretty much hit the yeah. nail on the head with that one. All right, so uh, creator to creator, how many people have ever had someone come in your chat, tweet at you, and go, "Hey, I just started streaming. Follow me." <laughs> oh, you're so lucky the people that didn't raise your hands. <laughs> uh, but there's also, you know, and there's also the part of it where, you know, like. I, I'll dare to say, like, we're all like colleagues, we're friends, we've gotten to know each other, which is why I invited people to be on the panel. Mm -hmm. There'll be a lot of people who go, oh, I want real friends in the space. I want to collab, I want to do whatever. But then they don't talk to other creators unless they want something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the weird press social thing. Or I can be like, oh my god, Thor, I can never talk to you, I can never collab with you because you're the Black Guild leader. And it would be like this, I'm going to pump you up, I'm going to do whatever. They're laughing because I would never in a million years say that. Um, but you know, things like that where it's like, I you know, I just want to holler at this creator because I think that I can be on the come up with them. I can yeah. talk to them. And you know, they might bring me along for a panel or something else or an activation. And then that's where that parasocial thing is because do you talk outside of those things? Do you talk outside of Program like, you know, Thor and I talk about magic, Mandy and I talk about magic, I pop up in k stream, I don't know what anime he's talking about half the time, but I'm there. <laughs> you know, I, I lurk in Jules' stream, or like, you know, we're streaming at the same time, I might try to like raid or just be present, if I never say a word. So, uh, you know, those kind of things, and since Jules and k didn't speak on the last point. Oh, I um, this one is very close to me because a lot of people hit me up just specifically for you know, because the brands I work with. Like I work with Elgato, I work with Corsair, I work with AMD. So I see a lot of people who I've never talked to a day in my life, who I've never seen in my chat, it's gonna be like, hey, K-Dot, oh, can we collab or can we do something? I'm like, I've never talked to you. So what do you want? I know you want something because you're not really coming in genuine with me. If you really wanna work with me, you want something from me, just have a conversation like, hey, how you doing? It starts that way. Or ask how about how my day was going. Or even a random anime. Let's talk about anime. Then it can build into something. But I see a lot of creators only talking to other creators because they see what they have and they want it. They're envious. They're hungry. And it's like either you can pick that brain of that creator and do it the right way. Ask them the, how they do it. Ask them what was their pathway. What was the, you know, the problem they went through. Or you can just figure it out yourself. But me personally, I deal with that a lot. So the way that I kind of set my boundaries is, I don't talk about business. We're not talking about business that we can talk about something friendly. If we can't talk about what you ate last night, what you did yesterday, or like I say, anime, then we can't really talk business yet. I gotta, I gotta feed you out first. And as someone that's still relatively new to the space and kind of on their come up, I've seen a lot just by simply observing that 
people are just contacting others, like KDOT said, just for that advantage, just based on who people know, who they have access to, um, and I don't know, I, just be genuine. Like, yeah. just go to a person, talk to them, just say hi. Um, just and one of the terms I like to apply. Sorry. One of the terms I like to apply to this is um, ladder climbers. There's people who are going to be along for that ride as long as it's convenient for them. And I always tell people if somebody comes in and on, automatically just starts latching on to try and ride that wave with you, be careful of that. Like if you have your spider sense going off on that and saying, hmm, this feels weird, respect that in your head. Think about why is that weird. And then put that in front of yourself and ask, is this a genuine person who's just trying to be a part of my community? Or is this somebody who's trying to get something with me? Because KDOT mentioned some fantastic points. Is when you find yourself getting paid sponsorships or working with companies, you're gonna have people who are going to try and get that info. And I'm all about free sharing of info yeah. to help out other people. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are, but you also gotta be careful and really, really respect. If something feels weird and you feel that somebody's using you, it's okay to say, mm, let's take it a step slow, let's, let's talk. And if you're not willing to take that route, then that's a red flag. Get out of my way. Yeah. And you'll notice real quick, once that wave is over and they disappear. Yeah, that's how you know. <laughs> yeah, or the people that just suddenly are all in your stream and you announce like, oh, I got a sponsorship, yeah. I got whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, I now work with AMD as well, but at, when Cyberpunk 2077 came out, I did an activation with NVIDIA. Why are these people that have never been in my stream, ain't never talked to me, didn't yeah. follow me, show up like, oh, how'd you get a 3080? How'd you get on with Cyberpunk? And I was like, because I'm not a jerk. Because <laughs> <laughs> I worked for it. Well, that too, but it was... What? No, no conversation. Like, oh, yo, how'd you, how'd you get on with, with NVIDIA? Because this was also when you couldn't get a 3080 to save your life. Yes. Uh, oh, and it was like, oh, I, I see where this is going. <laughs> it's, it's very transactional. Mm -hmm. I want something for you, from you, mm -hmm. and they might do something for you in return. But I feel like it's it, it's often more of a kind of one way transaction. Yeah. Um, but I think to the point you all made, it's it's building relationships mm -hmm. in the way of if somebody comes in and I have several cameras, I set up to sew, show my sewing machine, to have a face cam, what have you, and they want to ask questions about that absolutely happy to talk about it. Here's yeah. my setup. It's weird, I know, because I'm sewing. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, we're just laughing because one of our friends who's a creative streamer just sat down, so we're just giggling. <laughs> she also me. sews. And she's an ambassador. I'm going to embarrass her. We can embarrass her. It's fine. But I think it's you know it's me. the difference between coming in and saying, like, I want an answer just so I can bounce mm -hmm. and take that off to, to make something off of it, or coming in and wanting to have that conversation and build a relationship and be part yeah. of the community. Like, I'll say this 100%, I'm totally fine with people just coming in and asking me like, hey, how did you achieve this? I'm like, okay, cool, you, you are being very direct with me, I appreciate it, here's the info, bye, have a great day. Yeah. But if you manipulate me to try and get that answer, it's gonna, it's gonna tarnish any trust I have and that's what I'm gonna go to other people, like, be wary of this person because I don't know their intentions. Yeah. We, the community talks. Yeah, everyone talks to each other. They're shit on Twitch now. <laughs> creators talk, everyone. Uh, so especially when you're you're new and you're coming in, it's like you want to grow. You probably want to grow quickly. You might have you know aspirations of what you want your stream and your brand and who you are to be. But at the same time, creators talk, and I think. It's not just the relationships we build with our audience or with our fellow creators, it's the relationships we build with these brands, with the people yeah. who are your contacts. Like, I've had somebody be like, oh, can you introduce me to, you know, whoever you talk to at X company? No. I don't know you like that. Can you vouch for you? Can't vouch for you, and this is a relationship that I've spent time, potentially years, building. And I want to make sure that if I'm going to vouch for someone or if I'm going to make that introduction, that I'm going to do so with confidence mm -hmm. that you ain't going to make me look bad. Mm -hmm. What's what's the old the old tweet? Like, if you're going to tag me into something, don't embarrass me. That's <laughs> yep. this. That's this. 100%. Um, and the last thing on this is, it's not just when people are trying to like get a leg up or, or ride your coattails. It'll be people who think that, again, that they're sub pride, they're sub, sorry, I, am, I need a pop filter. <laughs> um, 
you know, people who come in and think that their five dollars buys you friendship. And I'm like, well, actually, that's only two dollars and fifty cents worth of friendship. <laughs> Which won't even get me a Coke in this convention center. No. <laughs> so, look, I have, this is my only panel. I'm an old broad. I don't care no more. Um, but, or the people that say, oh, well, you know, I'm a tier three sub. And it's like, that's nice. Thank you for your tier three. Because I will tell you that someone annoyed me once enough to where they were a Patreon person. It was $2 a month. And they, they got out of pocket. I mailed them $6 worth of pennies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can't, I can't. I can't that. But that's the same kind of thing, you know, and, and like I've seen panels and I've seen other places where people go, but they're a tier three sub or they're whatever. You can't bear them like, oh, watch me. <laughs> Remember this, anybody can get that work. They can catch a band, they can catch a timeout. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I've witnessed it in other streams where people are like, but but I'm afraid, that, or it's $25. I'm like, I will send you $25 right now. <laughs> or give me a mod sword, I will ban them. Because here's the thing, the parasocial part of it is that a lot of people think that they have to accept that parasocial mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all now, you ain't gotta accept nothing in your channel and in your life that you don't want to. Nope. And also, on top of that, like this isn't just a streaming thing either. This also applies, you've probably seen in the media recently, there's a lot of talk with celebrities asking audiences to respect their space. This popped up a lot with uh, just a lot of celebrities and also with game devs as well, where people buy a game and think that because they bought that game, they're entitled to heckle that game dev. And let me tell you, you heckle somebody in game dev, just like the stream world, it's a very small space, they will talk, you will get blacklisted. Mm -hmm. Don't be a jerk, please, because we will find out. But also, not only that, no matter how much you spend on somebody's job, no how long or no matter how long you've been supporting, if somebody does not consider you inside that bubble, you are not inside that bubble. The amount you spend on a stream, the amount you get for a stream, does not entitle you to that person's time, does not entitle you to anything from that person. And it's especially important to remember, especially at conventions, like we see you from our chat. You see us. Um, in a more personal way a lot of the time. And so when, even when you're at a convention, you see us coming up to us, running up to us, hugging us, touching us. Ask, ask first. Ask, hey, what, or this is me, this is who I am. Identify yourself. Who are you? Who you are. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, a lot of people have a lot of different traumas, uh, a lot of things that they may not be comfortable with. And by you coming up to them, you're breaching that parasocial boundary right there. It's very important that you let people know who you are and you respect their space so that they can then form a greater friendship with you inside of that space to say, okay, I've met you now. Now there's another layer broke down, that, down there and I'm comfortable with where this layer is at. Oh, we had slides for this part. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, we had a good conversation. That was more important than a bunch of words on a slide. Y'all can read. Uh, <laughs> So take your photos, I'm going to go through these since we covered these. Um, but you know, these are just things that you should think about. Or you know, for me it's like, oh my god, I love all of you so much. I'm going to tell you right now, I tolerate some of you. Uh, <laughs> Look, I, again, so you know, the people in the room who know me are going to laugh. I'm the same person on stream mm -hmm. as a person that you were seeing on this panel that you may run into. And I believe in the Irish goodbye. <laughs> Can I say something about one of the things on here? Sure. So, I just want to tell you all this. Pet names. Don't do it. You might think you're being nice. Oh, hey there, sexy. Hey there, beautiful. How's it going? We're just, don't do it. Just call them by their username. It's really simple, and it makes people feel really weird, really awkward. I've dealt with this in my community, and I just tell people, just call people by their username. Unless they give you permission to call you something different, it just makes people feel creeped out, and they might not be able to say it to your face in a lot of cases. So please, don't do pet names, even if you think it's harmless, unless you've explicitly been given permission by the streamer. Even then, because people who aren't in that community who come in and see that might take on that behavior, just don't use pet names. Yeah. Don't Similarly, it can be said for if people know your name, like actual name, you may have friends on the outside that know that you stream and they may come in and use your name. Maybe you want to tell your friend, just go by you know, your username. Um, but the similar thing here, like as people come in and they see like a friend that you're familiar with just you saying your government name, and it's like, I don't know you, why are you using my name? Yeah, and you know, I get that too. Like, unfortunately or fortunately, my whole legal name is out there and there's like, you know, 
and this is not a brag, believe me, because I hate it with my entire soul, but I've got a Wikipedia and IMDb, and people come in and it's like, oh, I saw this thing, or I saw that you have this, and I'm like, and whomst are you? I would say what I normally say, but I'm trying to keep it a little PG-13. <laughs> what? We're also streaming. Yeah, uh, it's my channel. <laughs> 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 Your channel, your rules. Oh, I'm just not going to say it when you pop into my channel. No, but I also think it's important to think about it from a perspective, and this will, I think, carry across all of these, which is like using real names with other creators. Again, I might see someone context for all of you, I moderate for Cypher as well, where it's like, oh, I know that Cypher knows somebody's first name because they've been around the stream before and I've been modding, but I don't know this person, so I'm not going to use their name. And I think it, it, until such time as they've granted me permission, so it'll be their username, but I think when you're considering the idea of like, what are the boundaries and what are, what do you want your space to be or that you're comfortable in as a viewer and an audience member, as a creator, and when you're in spaces that might be strictly creator spaces. Like, those are the things you wanna consider. So it's like pet names, it's uh, using people's names, it's how you wanna be addressed. Uh, I, for a very long time, did give everyone my first name. I, hi, I'm Andy. Um, and I didn't think about the context of it until people would come into chat and be like, hey, what's up, Andy? And I'm like, who are you? Do I know you? <laughs> have I introduced myself with this name to you before? Uh, and for it to have been somebody who's just not been in the community for quite some time, or I, I used to podcast, and they, would, they knew me for podcasting, and I'm like, I have no clue who you are. But I hadn't set that boundary. And that made it very confusing, and also a little stressful. Like, you, you want to make sure that you are not stressing yourself out with the ways in which people can show up. We know the internet can sometimes be a scary place. Depending on where you exist and who you are, we know sometimes like we uh, less nice to more femme presenting people, to all of the places in which we have kind of, you know, intersectionality of crossover if you're talking about like LGBTQ plus spaces, what have you. And so you wanna make sure as you're considering what you're establishing for these relationships, what it will look like, what you're showing, because you're only showing a portion of yourself. I hope you're all only showing a portion of yourself. <laughs> Personality and clothing wise. <laughs> um, it, it, <laughs> I felt like it had to be said, just so we were all on the same page. But that like you're taking into account what somebody's gonna potentially take away from this and how you are creating safety in your space from this perspective. And um, I know that I went through the slides um, just because we talked and now we're past this point, but I you know, wanna make sure we just, so you all can see this, things we're talking about. There's one thing we haven't talked about is trauma dumping. Who knows what trauma dumping is? <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. so proud of all of you. <laughs> You know, and for the, for the people that didn't raise their hand, basically it's like, you know, if, if you've got, let's say, even a regular, or maybe even not a regular, somebody pops in once in a while, they come in and they'll go, you know, I'm trying to give a bad example, or like, you know, I lost my job today, my pet died, my girl left me, my boy left me, my baby left me, and it's like, we were playing Pokemon and shit. <laughs> That's one of the things, and that's, but that's the PR social part of it, where people come in and go, but I'm virtually in your living room, or whatever we can shoot from, and how hope whoever's having that conversation. Yeah, they gonna be loud, ain't they? Like, that's a real good combo. I want to be in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, those things like that, where they don't think about the time, the moment, or you know, and our, our friend DJ Knight does, now has a rule about this, like when celebrities pass. And people come in and go, did you hear someone so fast? That, that changes the whole thing. I ignore it. I ignore it. it. It's just one of those things of, like, I have a rule for two things. Don't trauma dump, don't wealth dump. Don't come in and constantly talk about what you're getting, how, how successful you are at everything every other week, and it's the same kind of thing with money. And don't come in and talk about things dying, because you're going to shift the mood of the entire creator. Yeah. And it's very hard for us to jump from 
you know, being really excited about something, uh, talking about what we're liking about the game we're playing, and then having to process that news. And the other thing, too, is you're making an innocent bystander out of every other single person in that audience who did not consent mm -hmm. to allowing that information to be transferred. And that is equally damaging for the streamer and the people there, because then the community then expects the content creator to lay down that boundary. And if they don't know how to handle that process, they now have lost multiple community members from that transaction when they later on will have to go and set that boundary and say, you can't do this in my community. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of boundaries, uh, DMs. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. DMs. <laughs> oh, my, <laughs> my DMs are shut down. Unless, like, in a public setting, I give you permission to, like, DM me, please don't. Um, it's, it's very common for just people normally hanging out in your community. You feel like a closest, some sort of closest to the creator. Doesn't mean you can just DM them whenever you want. Just say, hey. I hate small talk. What do you want? <laughs> oh, I, that's my reply. And I'm like, can I help you? Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to say something? Wow. As far as like the trauma dumping, I know you had mentioned like somebody coming in and say, hey, like somebody broke up with me. I kind of entertain it. Like, what you do? What did you do? Do we just go about it? We go about it, talk about it, they end up laughing, and I either if they're new, I got a new viewer. If they're old, they probably feel a little bit better and I keep the energy the same and it's not like we really got deterred from what was happening. But a lot of times when trauma dump happens, I, I ignore it just because mentally I'm not about to go to that place. Whatever I'm doing at that moment in time, I need to focus on that. And then 30 to 40 people is already in there watching me. So that would be kind of doing a disservice to them to even like engage in that trauma dumping. Uh, and I know my mods, they see that and they either message somebody or they delete the message. So I kind of got a good team that keeps everything on the tracks and keep it going. Um, and sometimes y'all can do the same thing too. If y'all set a boundary within your Discord, your community, let them know like, hey, we're not trauma dumping, we're not talking about none of this. It's a place for fun, gaming, etc. And if somebody break it, that boundary's crossed, time them out, ban them, etc. And set that boundary early. Yeah. Like especially when you're if you're just coming to streaming very recently, set that boundary early. So this way you don't have to 180 and people have to go like, well you used to be fine with this. Well, things change. You as a content creator are allowed to change in a space and you are allowed to become uncomfortable with something due to your experiences. If you set those boundaries early, then you won't have to deal with as much negative impact later on. So I highly yeah. recommend set those boundaries, be clear with them, and don't allow people to skirt past them. Yeah. And I'll, I think you said it a little bit earlier, Thor, too, which is considering using trauma dumping here as the example, but I think a lot of different ones, is what you allow as a creator means that you are potentially making the rest of your community, the people in your chat, collateral damage mm -hmm. to what you have allowed. And I think that that is a very point, like when you talk about boundary setting or who you wanna be, what your brand or whatever it is uh, as a creator, it's also a little bit about what type of space do you want to cultivate and what do you allow and not allow there? I, I'd say to people is this, the people who are in your community who are made uncomfortable by the actions of others will not bring that up to you. And that is unfortunate, but it also puts them in the spot of having to um, force an interaction to bring up something that they feel uncomfortable. They don't know how you're going to react to that. So rather than bring that up, in a lot of cases, they are going to disappear unless they are very interconnected with the community. That's not necessarily a fault of your own. That's just how a lot of the streaming space is be. And so it's very important to just make sure that you set those boundaries and you clear it immediately so this way you don't drive away people unknowingly. I'm like, man, this person used to stop all the time. Where are they now? They left because you didn't enforce those boundaries. Um, just to make sure that one, we have time for a few questions, but also it, it's important to tell you how to deal with it. We've kind of touched on some of these things already, but you know, the main thing is recognizing when this is happening. Because a lot of times, you know, for all the, you know, all of us have various streams content creator experiences, sometimes you don't realize it's happening. You know, it's been a thing for years, but if you're new to the space and you're not realizing it's really happening, you gotta recognize it. Um, so quickly, does anyone wanna focus on one or, one or two of these? Cause I do wanna make sure we have time for questions. And also I wanna make sure that K-Dot and Jules talk, cause y'all only talk much. Hey, look, cause I ain't gonna lie to y'all, it's a whole bunch I wanna say, but if I got three great answers, what can I mean? Look, I'm just, this is how I'm moderating. I make sure everybody's got time to speak. That's cool. 
See, y'all agree with me though, cause y'all laugh. <laughs> but um, I want to touch on. I'm gonna touch on what I what I feel like is connected to me. It's like realizing the creator's using you. Um, so the way that I, like I said, I kind of deal with it. Either I try to build that relationship so I don't feel like I'm being used. So if somebody come for me, like, hey, how do I get in contact with this company? I might try to reach out to them and play the game, try to learn more about them. So I might do what they should be doing and take the initiative to actually try to build a relationship so I don't feel like I'm being used. Or a lot of times I see it, yeah, you're not, I'm not talking to them. I'm ignoring the DM, I'm ignoring the message in the chat, I'm ignoring half the things you're saying just because I feel like you're trying to you're trying to get something from me that I'm not willing to give just yet. So I, like I said, I try to be the one to take the first step. Um, and I'll touch on disengaging um, from a community member that's too attached. Um, there may be times you play community games. Um, maybe you're playing something like um, GTA RP. Very, very well-known space to have those sort of parasocial relationships. There have been instances where um, people from that space will start trying to get closer to that creator by like adding their friends, like just starting random conversations or just inserting themselves into your space and it just makes you feel extremely uncomfortable. Um, and you just kind of have to keep send it, setting that boundary like, hey, like we'll be in contact with each other in this space, but that doesn't mean that outside of that, you're free to like approach me as though I'm your friend, even though maybe in GTA RP, yeah, sure we are. Yeah. But that's in GTA. Of that, yeah. <laughs> that's in GTA. <laughs> but yeah, it's just you just have to be very strong in establishing that that line. Mm -hmm. Tell them not to cross it. Yeah. Uh, so two things. One, if you have a question, start lining up. Yeah. And I'm serious. I have a question. I will tell you to sit down. And the second thing is, and just quickly because since we are in an in-person convention in terms of being too attached, remember that while you may see a creator you really like, that you're a fan of, that you're really into, remember that you, while you are in person and you're going to talk to them, you are not their friend. Now that obviously if you're really friends, this doesn't apply. Yeah. However, just because you give them five, ten, whatever, or just because you've been a fan a long time, doesn't mean like if we say, oh, after the panel, we're gonna go get dinner, that doesn't mean that you trail behind us and come to dinner. Because I'm, I'm going there and shoot. For a lot of us, you're a username on a screen that we read in text. Yeah. And that is the bulk of our interaction with you because that's what the relationship is. So like, we're not probably going to recognize your face. Uh, and I think those are, it's like important to walk up and like introduce yourself. Hey, I'm so and so, and you know I was around for Xtreme, or I saw you at Y events, or something that gives a little bit of context on why they should know you. Uh, and the other thing I'll throw into um, that kind of falls into both the disengaging and knowing when to cut people off, whether it's your mods or it's like a person you know in real life, if you have real friends, no judgment. Um, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we're all just fake friends. Um, practice them to be like, hey, I want to practice how I address something, like what I say, how I say it. You know, it, it sounds silly, but working through how you want to handle saying no, or I'm not okay with that, or I need you to take a step back, can make it a little less frustrating or scary when you have to do it live in the moment and you're reacting to something. So like, it sounds silly to be like, yes, role play telling somebody no, uh, but... <laughs> It can be helpful, especially if you're early on in your journey. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the only other thing is also in terms of that. Also, don't come and go. I follow you on Twitter and then leave. Y'all laugh. This has happened to me almost at every convention I've ever been to. Or do the oh my god, I can never bother you. I'm, I'm a small streamer. I'm, I'm a whatever. And I'm like, but you took the time to come and say hello to me. So to me, that means a lot more. And also, please take small streamer out your mouth. You're a streamer, you're a content creator, yeah. take that out your mouth. Okay. Um, um, all right, so yes, your question, please. Sure, I have two, but I'll be very quick. So first, um, how much ambition is too much? You don't want to be... I'm not funny. a therapist, I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being funny, no, that is, that is a very subjective question. As long as you are not ruining your life with ambition and 
forgetting everything else, that, to me, that's it. All right, sounds good. So, second one. <laughs> How do you deal and see through, like, false positives? Like, what if someone's actually legit, but they're just really skilled, like, Lalo Salamanca levels of manipulation? Anybody want to take that? The question was, how do you deal with someone who's like a master manipulator? Yeah, like, a fuck who's enough to like fool you into thinking they're legit. If, if somebody does that, I, if I find out, I cut them off. And yeah, if I hear yeah. from other people in the community, they're gone. It, it is not a question of, oh, how much do they need to do? No, if they even breach that initial trust, even at the littlest amount, they're gone. I don't trust people to manipulate, and neither should you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hi, so like... I done screwed up, a new streamer, and didn't have any of these boundaries when I started, and now I want to know, like, what is the best way to, like, roll those back so that my viewers don't necessarily feel comfortable being, like, I broke my leg, or I got dumped, like, how do you roll that? Well, um, I would say, <laughs> so since you know exactly where you messed up at, start with those steps, like, like you just said, somebody come into your chat and they basically trauma dump it, Set the tone like, hey chat, we're not trauma dumping. You can either start by doing that daily, like actually live so they know and everybody knows that you're not playing. Or you can you know, send Discord messages. I don't know if they're part of your Discord or not. You can do notifications, announcements, and let people know like, hey, these are the boundaries that I'm setting going forward. If you cross these boundaries, you're getting timed out, you're getting banned, whatever that you need to do. So I feel like you got the plan. You just need to put it in motion, really. And real quick, what's the difference between trauma dumping and legit being like, I broke my ankle? I, I think that depends on the person. Oh, well, trauma dumping is like, you're constantly coming in, you're basically being an Eeyore. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, my life is so terrible. I have no money, nothing yeah. is going right. I wish I could go to TwitchCon too, but I hate my life. That kind of thing constantly is trauma dumping. Yeah. Saying I broke my leg is a factual thing. I broke my leg. Yeah, like, <laughs> like that could be trauma, but it's like, all right. And I also think it's a little bit of context too, where it's like, hey, something happened factual or somebody coming in and being like let me tell you all about all of the terrible things and one, one of my family members has passed and suddenly you were having you know a cozy game day and everybody is now very down because that is I will say the one extra thing too is depending on what the scope of like is it just one thing or if there's a lot of things that you kind of want to reset I think it's fair to say hey y'all I been spending some time thinking about what I want for my channel and my content in the future, and based on what I want to do, I'm going to make a slew of changes. Here's what they are. And then I think what you had said is good for like when you're talking about individual things, like, hey, there's one thing I messed up on, but if you're like, oh, I've made a real big mess, it's fair to say, hey, I've rethought it, and here's what it's going to be like moving forward. This is what I want to do that'll be best for me and the channel and the content in our community. Thank you. And lastly, this is very brief, but you can also privately warn people now through a lot of the Twitch moderation tools and your mods can too. So if you tell them, be wary of these things, they can send that out and they won't know who sent that. Yep. And one last thing to note is if you establish those boundaries and you find that people are just continuously breaking them or they feel like, oh, I don't feel like I need to follow them, then they're not meant for your community. Yep. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, I'm Pitch. Um, my question is in the nature of uh, balancing uh, the parasocial relationship, your boundaries, and money. I hear you guys when you say a sub is a 250. Uh, tier 3 sub, a little more. What if they're dropping 50,000 bits? No, they get saying that. It <laughs> how do, my, question, my question, I'm with you, is how do you continually incentivize such a thing? There's no price tag. Yeah. They, they don't get an inch. Right. Nothing. They, you can drop yeah. a million dollars. I will still ban you if you cross my boundaries. All right, fair enough. Yeah, that must say that's personal. Yeah. 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 So, but how can, I guess, I, my question still is in the nature of, like, how do you, I guess I'm not explaining it well, so I'll just no, it's kind of like, is you really asking us how much is your morals worth? Like, no, how much no, your no, boundaries how much worth? How much like, how do you how, communicate? How do you communicate your boundaries? The phrase, correct me, okay. who said this, if I get it wrong. Anything that you might choose to tip or sub or what have you grants you access to the entertainment, not to the entertainer. Thank you. That's the point. Okay. Got it. Was that obvious? Yeah. It was greater than it was artist. It was artist. Thank you for the word. Thank you very much. That is not my quote. I just remember it. We've used it before. Uh, we got four minutes. Wrap up.
Hey, how you doing? Oh, my name is Kale's dad. Um, I had a certain situation. Can you lean down a little bit? Okay, you saw me too tall. Uh, no, you just want to hear the mic. Question, what is it? So my question is, um, how do you deal with a person who creates a bad situation with you and then they go out of their way to turn others against you? Mm. So, do you want the polite answer or do you want my petty answer? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, so my actual answer is, it, depending on how much it affects your community, sometimes I've seen people like, okay, here's what's going on, especially if people start coming to you like, like, oh, so, so and so came to me and said you did blah blah blah, and it's like, did they send you screenshots? Did they send you any comp? Did they send you any receipts? Mm -hmm. And if it, and they ain't got a single receipt, they just got, oh, well, so and so told me. I'm like, then you t show me screenshots of what they told you, because we ain't in high school. I don't play this anymore. We don't do the he said, she said. Mm -hmm. And if it's disrupting your community, disrupting your life, that's when you just go, you're gone. And anyone who wants to come to you and believe that without any evidence, that yeah. means they ain't yeah. meant to be your people. Yeah. Because I've had too many people, both IRL and streaming, come to me and either want to tell me about somebody did blase blase, why, why are they still here? Why aren't you mad? And I'm like, because no one has brought me evidence. Yeah. We are fact-based people. And then... I've, I've had to recently get rid of people that did a Whisper Network thing and then didn't come to me and go, okay, what's the deal? And I'm like, you and your cronies can get out. <laughs> because, nope, because, you know, I don't care who they are, how close you are, if somebody's going to turn around and try to ruin your reputation, especially if they have no evidence, then they gotta go. And if they wanna get on Twitter, do whatever, just block them and don't engage. Because the more you engage with them, the more people will go, oh, well, you're arguing with them. You must have something to hide. You must have something to prove. I gotta prove none of nobody. I gotta be black, pay my taxes, and die. <laughs> <laughs> and we can talk about the hall, too. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, we got time for maybe one more question, and then we'll talk to the rest of you out in the hall. Okay, so from a neurodiverse perspective, you have people who say, how are you? How are you feeling when you come into the chat? And then somebody's like, well, everything they just share. <laughs> right. And then you have just, you know, different people who yeah. can't read the room. And so what does your, like, grace or capacity look like when it comes to neurodiversity and people who struggle with that kind of thing? So as somebody who is neurodiverse and has to deal with that quite often, I just let people know, I'm like, hey, I understand that you know are maybe having a bad day or maybe this is going on, but these are the things that are appropriate to talk about in the stream, and while I understand your situation, this is not the proper place to go over that. And I find that that's generally a great way of them saying, oh, okay, and then switching the topic. And just, with people who are neurodiverse, we hate it when people bullcrap us or put irrelevant information in the way, so being straight to the punch and just cutting through the bullcrap is the best way to approach that. Um, and just one other thing with that is that, you know, sometimes you may not be the best person to deal with it, even, mm -hmm. even if it's your channel or if you're a mod somewhere else. Just, I might just go, hey Thor, or, hey Lady Luck, this happened in the stream, could you help me with figuring this out? Because I have had people where it got to the point of, well, you didn't let me come in the trauma dump, or you didn't let me come in and do whatever, and it turns into your ableist versus I just didn't have the capacity for this in this moment. Any final thoughts? Also, please take a picture of that. Um, sorry again, the formatting got weird, but the links are there. Um, yeah. So, any last thoughts? Any wrap up? Anything else before we uh, end, uh, hopefully, on time? Thank you very much for having us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but also, quickly, who are you? What else are you doing on time? Uh, well, so, well, I'm Kate Guy. You can just call me Kate. You ain't got to say the whole name. Uh, tomorrow I am doing a show called Guess What's in the Box. It's a fun show. I'm the producer of it. I'm also the host. So I would love you guys to come and you know show love. What time? Uh, three, three, forty-five. Three forty-five. <laughs> Type my name in on the app. K dot the God. G A W D. No disrespect to G O D. And you can see everything I'm doing. <laughs> um, and I'm Cyber Jewels, tech-based creator. I do 3D printing, electronics, and stuff. Um, so if you're sort of into that sort of thing. I don't really have anything else that I have going on this weekend. So. Uh, name is Thorman Gander. You can just call me Thor or type that into the TwitchCon app. I'll be doing an interactive session tomorrow where we'll be having four Twitch ambassadors fight each other on alternative controllers that they've never used before.
for games like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Street Fighter 6, and Tetris Effect with Ooh. Donkey Kong bongos, uh, DDR pads, and two players, one controller. Oh. <laughs> I'm very intrigued by this. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Lady Web 34 a variety streamer who does crafty things like sewing and crochet and then video games, and I hyper-focus on one thing at a time. Uh, and I also don't have anything else planned for the con besides wandering around and hopefully getting to see a lot of really cool talks and things, so. Uh, and I've been your moderator, Cypher Tears, C-Y-P-H-E-R, O-M-T-Y-R, I had to think about how to spell my username. Uh, this was my only panel, so I'll be roaming around. If you see me, say hi. Um, but on Twitch, I do a variety of things. I do a lot of Baldur's Gate. I do a lot of, uh, come October 31st, I'll be a Dragon Age girly. Woo! Just forget everything else exists. Um, and then I also do crafting. I do mini painting. I make dice. I do other stuff. But once in a while, I'll just get on and talk if I literally have no other plan for the stream. But thank you so much. Thanks to everyone uh, watching at home. And uh, have a great Twitch con, y'all. Lady Luck, thank you for understanding and interpreting. That was perfect. It took me a second where I'm like, I'm processing this, and I think I gave her. I was fumbling, and then you took it home. Thank you. <laughs> oh, then I only watch for 30 minutes. I can't. I got it.